Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rick and once again I'm in my backyard. This is the side entrance to my garden. So I'm going to give you a little walk around the garden, show you some stuff. And then uh, towards the end I'm going to show you some Hoyas that I picked out, including some uh, really splashy Wakanoses. And I'm really confused about them and I'm sure a lot of people are as well. So I'm going to show you the ones that I have and maybe you guys can put in the comments what you think it is because it seems like everyone's coming out with a new uh, name for a splash of Lacano, so like silver, pink silver, mint silver, and it's really confusing even for somebody who's been growing Hoyas for 20 years. So stick around. Let's get to it. So over here, not much going on. There's a lot of new growth uh, in these Hoyas, but it's uh, I've been lucky enough that it's been raining like almost every day we don't have um, you know, about an inch of rain in, uh, in the uh, late afternoon, so which is great for the plants because rainwater is best and uh, the heat and humidity, they're putting out a lot of new growth. But with that comes a um, decrease in amount of blooming. I believe that uh, when Hoyas are a little more uh, dry, uh, a little more stressed out for uh, moisture, they bloom more. So let me just take you around and see what's going on here. Um, over here I actually have a bloom on my AH73 back here. It's quite cute. It has like all these shades of pink. I don't know if you can uh, see it very well, but um, there you go. Yeah, it's a really pretty Hoya. It has a mild uh, fruity scent and uh, yeah, it has nice dark edges to the leaf. You can see this is one of the AHs. And it blooms quite often. It blooms like every uh, every time it, uh, it puts out a bloom, it dries out, and then a week later it'll stop blooming again in the same peduncles. And my uh, New Guinea ghost down here is pretty happy. It's been, real, like I said, really uh, wet and hot and humid. I can only stand being outside for half hour. Then I have to go in uh, into the AC. As you can imagine, when temperatures are in the upper 90s and it's humid, it's pretty miserable. So over here I have my uh, Affinis uh, Burton A. Keeps blooming. It has quite a few. showed it last videos, I think. But it keeps popping up with a lot of new, uh, uh, new peduncles. And the flowers are going to be opening up soon on these. As you can see down here, this... There's two more. And I uh, have a big uh, Sarawak, a lot of Hoya from Sarawak here. And this is one of my favorite Hoyas. It uh, used to go by um, Hoya Emowina from Java. It's uh, IML 1038, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And it has a very strong uh, midrib and quite textured uh, surface. The leaf is kind of, when it gets mature, it's pretty pretty uh, tough and it uh, gets really succulent. So um, I think the trick to grow in this Hoya is do not grow it uh, too wet. So it's in a very loose mix. So when it rains, the water just runs right through it. Uh, and that's what you need for all the Hoyas that I have out here. They're basically in just chunks of perlite and chunks of coconut um, husk. So. Uh, that when it rains, the rain just goes right through it. And that will keep the roots from rotting. If it's in a regular potting mix, these would be all rotted with all the rain that I'm getting. And don't know, a few videos back, I started doing this project and it failed because that piece of wood uh, went down. Then I had a, few, a friend over and he helped me put it back up uh, with more reinforcements. And um, uh, a friend came by the other day and gave me this big giant uh, Jose Bueno that was growing up her palm tree that she's moving away. Uh, so I'm going to put it there. As you can see, there's like a burlap bag filled with coconut and uh, sphagnum moss. So my idea is that it's going to start putting out a lot of roots and attaching itself down to that, uh, that branch. Um, it's like hanging some Hoyas from there as well. There's an IM8. This is uh, an AH39. And this is 
uh, an AH-75. So uh, I'm going to put a lot of mosses. The skidias, um, maybe something in the background. So uh, this is underneath a, a live oak tree here. So you can see this live oak has a bunch of uh, main branches coming from the ground here. And uh, that little space always I didn't know what to do with it. So I decided to um, put, a, put that branch across it and uh, fill it with plants. It may, it may look interesting. Then I'll add some orchids and some other uh, aeroids. So that should look pretty cool. And then one that I haven't talked about uh, in a long time is this uh, Cebu Blue. And it's pretty huge. I don't know if it's kind of hard to film it because the leaves are like two feet long. Let's see if I can uh, get in there. But this is a Cebu Blue that started out in a pot at the base of this and um, and it started climbing it's been here for about three years let me see if you can see a little bit but yeah it's probably about 15 feet up this tree so it's pretty huge I'm pretty impressed how it fenestrated really nice and it's actually left the pot and there's no roots in the ground and uh, the whole plant is attached this is the this is the um, the branch, and these are the roots from that Cebu Blue. And I removed the pot, and there's none. So all this plant is getting all its nutrients from this tree and from the air. So that's the Cebu Blue. Oh, and here's a bloom I didn't even know I had. Uh, this is a Benvergari. Very uh, prolific bloomer here in the garden. It's like uh, like every other week I'll have another uh, opening of a pedunco. And there's another latifolia there. And then I have a uh, Swiffer's treat over here. And then I have a peach bellini over here. So let me go into the backyard and show you what's going on. So I put up the cushions when it rains so they dry up a little quicker. So like I said, there was a lot of uh, rain uh, in the past few days. So back here, I think I showed you the last five videos. This is my uh, fungi. It's a really gorgeous Hoya. And the secret, I'm giving you my secret to growing this Hoya. She is in very loose, chunky mix, and she's out here getting all rainwater. Uh, and I, I threw in like half a cup of bat droppings, of bat guano, uh, into the pot here. And since then, it just went crazy putting out new growth. And it has a peduncles. It's been putting out peduncles as well, as you can see. So it's a really, really pretty, pretty Hoya. The leaves are pretty gorgeous. Uh, and it's a really fast grower uh, in the right conditions. Like if you have it heat and humidity and it's on its growth spurt, it'll fill out this pot. And I think this plant is only a few months old. So you can see how fast it's growing. Um, back here, I think I showed you my, uh, my PPP, my Philodendron Pink Princess. As soon as the price is starting going down on this plant, it started putting out pink because it wasn't before. So over here I have this really pretty uh, begonia. I thought I think they call I bought it at Home Depot, and I think the name of this is Sinbad. I was told on one of my Facebook groups. So if you're not part of Rick and Swiffer's Facebook group, join. Uh, send a friend, send a request to join and I'll let you in. And basically that's my uh, site where I sell a lot of Hoyas, a lot of starters and other plants as well. So it's a fun group. Everyone's really nice. Um, it's a safe place. So please come and uh, enjoy uh, the group. Participate. Look around. See if you see anything you like. Yeah, so join the group. So over here, my update on the Friday, this leaf unfurled last week. It's really quite exquisite. Uh, it's really happy here. I've only had this plant for maybe three weeks. And uh, this is the Ring of Fire. 
it unfurled this really gorgeous leaf. It's pretty variegated. And this is the um, the Monstera Oblica Peru, I believe that's what they call it. And if anyone knows out there that's putting out uh, these really long runners, so I, in my um, knowledge of growing plants is that eventually these will put out new leaves. But should I uh, put these runners uh, in another pot, like bury them, so that they develop more of a root system and put out uh, and start another plant that way? Or should I just let it go and then when it has leaves, um, maybe it would be better to pot up then. But it's putting out these really long, like these are like almost three feet long runners. And um, yeah, so I'm really happy with this plant. I've only had it for like a little bit over a month and it's uh, putting out a lot of new growth even from the center there. So I'm really content with that. And this is the tortum. Uh, I think last week it was beginning to unfurl. And the new leaf is just exquisite. It's just so cool looking. And it's so happy here with all this rain. And that is the Burl Marks variegated. Again, tons of new growth. So, yeah, everything is really happy. There's a bunch of stuff also happening back there but i'll show you next week on that side let me get to the hoyas and here are my lachnoses uh, i think all of them were either sold to me as silver or uh, silver splash um, or some other name but or croniona silver but i'll just show you some differences and most of these lachnoses they flower pretty much the same so the variety of leaf is a little different, but I don't think naming it uh, because it has a slightly different shape leaf is helpful because I get confused and I've been growing Hoyas for over 20 years. So let me just show you some of these. This one is, uh, I acquired it as Hoya, um, I'm sorry, Hoya Lacandosa Silver. And you can see this one actually deserves that name because it's almost completely covered in splash so you barely ever see any green coming through that so yeah this is a hoya lacandosa silver definitely um the difference in leaves uh this leaf here was grown outside here in my conditions hot and humid outside and these little ones were grown uh inside my terrarium so they're grown under a grow light so you, as you can see the uh, conditions that a Hoya grows in uh, greatly affects the shape uh, and um, the appearance of the leaf. So this is one plant. You have nice little little compact leaves and then under another growing condition you have this kind of leaf. And this Hoya here I got it on eBay about I would say about two months ago and as like Silver Splash Again, it's different from the Croniana that I grew for the last, you know, 15, 20 years. Um, these leaves are not as textured. They're pretty thick, but they don't have the ribbing that some of the Cronianas have. And the Cronianas are more heart-shaped uh, than this. And there's uh, some controversy about the publication of Croniana. And some argue that their Cronianas are all actually lachnosis. So there's that aspect. Um, so you can see the Silver Splash has a variety. So it's not helpful if somebody decides to take a cutting because they think those leaves look different and name it something else. It just makes it more confusing. As I said, I've been growing for so long and I get really confused with these. And this guy here is another one that I picked up locally at a nursery. Um, this one didn't have a name, I don't think, but it's more like a lacanosa shape leaf. It's pretty splashy. The leaves run from, you know, probably 80% splash to, to like 10%. As you can see, some of them can get really pretty. So I think a lot of people would call this lacanosa silver as well. But you can see that is different from this. And then I think there's some other clones out there called Louisa or... Um, 
silver snow or all kinds of names and it gets really confusing. So that is my take on the Hoyoakonosis. I hope that uh, takes away some of the stress of some of the people that are stressing out because they don't know what their Wakanosa is. And over here I have uh, two Hoyas, um, a Hoya Yuna over here. As you can see, it's quite stunning. It has a lot of splash, has a lot going for it. It's uh, beautiful, beautiful leaves, very textured, very easy to grow. And then over here, uh, I call it the poor man's uh, Yuna. This is an uh, NAP7, a NAP7. And it was sold to me as a NAP7 from Indonesia. And it is quite the stunner. As you can see, it does have really good veining. It has the dark edge. And it really sun stresses pretty nicely. As you can see, this uh, it's turning a little, little brown there. So that's pretty. And let's see underneath the leaf is pretty green. Let's see underneath the leaf of the Una. Pretty much not too much of a difference. But in my eye, these two Hoyas are not too different. I haven't seen flowers on either one of them. But from foliage point of view, uh, they're really stunning uh, to look at. And this one tends to be a lot cheaper than the Yuna. And uh, this Hoya is another a new, pretty new acquisition. I'm actually rooting this cutting. Um, this is NAP3, NAP3 from Indonesia. As you can see, uh, some leaves can have uh, almost no splash. And then all of a sudden it uh, puts out this really exquisite pattern of splash that I find quite attractive. And then some leaves are almost like 75% uh, covered in splash. So uh, this is a really, really, really beautiful Hoya. Um, it's not the easiest one to root, so uh, it takes a little longer than some of the Hoyas I've been rooting. But it's quite, um, quite beautiful. And I have a big one. And once it starts, when it, when it roots and it starts growing, uh, it puts out a lot of uh, splashy leaves. And it's actually a pretty good growth rate on this Hoya. And uh, just a quick update because it's getting so hot and I think this video is getting too long. This is a uh, Hoya uh, species Tendao, Tam Dao, uh, Vietnam. And it's quite gorgeous, uh, quite veiny. The leaves seem to be getting bigger. Um, it seems to be easy to grow. I haven't been able to bloom it, so that'll be interesting. I have a feeling it'll probably look similar to a Hoya Carnosa. But uh, these new Hoyas coming out of uh, Vietnam are quite beautiful. They have really nice colored green with a lot of veining. They just make really beautiful uh, foliage plants. So that is an update on Tendao Vietnam. And it seems to be doing pretty well here. Uh, it's putting out all this new growth and uh, this long runner. Uh, the one I have at the greenhouse, uh, my other, uh, my big greenhouse is a lot bigger, but I didn't have that here to show you guys. And over here in bud, I have Hoya Kadata from Sumatra. And this Hoya is. If, uh, there's a few Hoyas that have everything going for them, and this is one of them. Uh, the, flowers is, the flowers are just quite exquisite, and I'll share uh, that with you next video uh, when they open up. So it's going to bloom soon, but the foliage on this Hoya is really, really stunning. You can see it has a real primitive look of like these bronzes and greens and the splash that it gets, the nice... Uh, uh, rippled edge is really quite attractive. It sun stresses really well and the leaves are just just super gorgeous. Uh, there's some browns and they get a lot more sun stressed than this. As you can see the back of the leaf uh, is a nice maroon color and I just noticed this plant is putting out more peduncles here and here. 
and I think there's another one down here. So uh, it's it's reached a really good point, and it's it's looking beautiful. I think I just found a mealy bug here that I need to take care of. So I'll have to spray it with some alcohol, and that should take care of it. Um, yeah, but this is a really gorgeous Hoya. Let me just hold her up uh, so you can see her getting some sun. So that is Hoya Kadata from Sumatra. And it's really a must in every Hoya collection. And I'd like to end this video with this uh, overachiever of the week. This is a Hoya Haifong uh, from uh, Vietnam. I believe it's from the northern part of Vietnam. Uh, as you can see, it's in a four inch pot. Uh, I think I planted that at uh, probably the end of May from a cutting so it's put out quite a bit of growth and uh, this is a wild pollinated uh, seed pod uh, this Hoya was growing up at my big greenhouse up about 30 minutes away from here and not only is it doing that putting out uh, puts out a nice seed pod it also has a nice vine, uh, vine growing and it's putting out another flower uh, peduncle there so uh, there you go Hoya Haifong overachieving so it's always nice to have overachievers as you all will agree so hope you enjoyed this video I hope you come back I upload a video once a week usually on Sunday and uh, hope you have a great week and I will see you back on Sunday <music>